Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee <laughs> meeting. Tonight is a budget workshop session, and today is Thursday, uh, November 5th. If everybody would rise, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could start out our meeting with a roll call around the table so that our secretary can pick up on us. Um, I'll start in the corner with Selectman Bean. Hi, Sylvie. And Phil, could you come over maybe on this side only so that we have a better scan of the table? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Nick? Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Warren Buckley. Uh, Sonny Kravitz. Jim O'Loughlin. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Stephen LeBrange. Jones. Mike Cliff. Jersey Mark. Deadwood. Okay, and we are continuing on as we have in the last two meetings with asking our department heads to come in and explain their budget to us. As we've mentioned twice before, we are not voting on the budgets tonight. Uh, we will move that to review and um, take presentations and questions tonight. Um, all questions. Uh, will be in order after with raised hands. We won't go around the table as we had last year, person by person. So if you have a question, raise your hand. And the only thing I'm going to ask is that you ask your group of questions at one time so we're not constantly going back and forth. With that being said, you have the agenda in front of you, which has um, personnel administration on first. I'm going to, since almost everything on the agenda tonight will be with Christy and with Fred. I'm going to ask attorney Mark Gerald to come up and do it in a reverse order and put legal out first. Okay, so for reference, it's page eight in your workbook and OBS four. Good evening, attorney Gerald, how are you? Thank you, good, and you? Very good. The budget of the legal department it consists of two parts, basically, as always. The first part is the uh, in-house office portion, and the second part is uh, more, it's titled legal expenses, it's more the outside portion. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, the budget is uh, $198,875. Uh, this represents the lowest figure for the uh, legal line uh, since 2004. Uh, one thing you don't see on this budget is the uh, income that the department does generate by virtue of reviewing condominium and homeowners association documents at the behest of the planning board. Uh, last year's figure that was uh, brought in was $2,376.40 this year with all the development that's proposed. That figure is approximately $6,000. Uh, we have uh, a number of litigation cases, of course, that are handled in-house, and the uh, bulk of those that end up being uh, tried are uh, tax abatement cases at the Board of Tax and Land Appeals. Um, the total number of cases that we had pending last year uh, was uh, 27, or I'm sorry, 29, and as of this year, that number is now down to 16. Uh, nevertheless, that still represents a significant exposure to the town in tax abatement cases, exposure being defined as the difference between what the town uh, taxes and what is being sought by way of abatements and uh, the exposure uh, at this point for those tax abatement cases is approximately $650,000. Uh, there were no questions uh, submitted to me in advance so 
I did not uh, prepare anything beyond this, but uh, the bottom line is that uh, between this, the budget that's requested this year and what was uh, budgeted last year by virtue of the default budget, we're at minus 4.33%. Uh, there is a development in the law that I do want to alert the board to uh, after the uh, budget is discussed. Is that your total discussion on the budget? That's it. Okay. Hands for questions. Jerry? Okay. Again. Hi, Mark. Hello. Uh, I don't see any gas allowance, uh, gas allowance drop off. A uh, thousand bucks was in there last year. You got a thousand dollars in this year. You spent 192 a day. Can you comment on that? That's a uh, sum that you never know what you're going to be up against. If you drive a lot to uh, various places, uh, if, for instance, if I was doing a lot of testimony in front of the legislature, mm -hmm. as has been done in the past, you'd see that being a higher figure. That's Zero and no 14 mark. Zero one zero fourteen one ninety two today. <coughs> That's you must have an economical. <laughs> it's a uh, <laughs> it's a contingency uh, that you never know what you're going to be up against. Okay, outside council fees have doubled from last year. You're now asking for fifty k, fifty thousand uh, dollars. In two fifteen was twenty five thousand dollars. Two thousand and fourteen was twenty nine thousand dollars. Year to date in 015 annualizes out to be 18.4 annualized year to date. Please explain. Uh, the year to date that I've got so far, just so you know, <coughs> so September 30, 2015, yeah, right. is 21,425. Right, I annualized it. Okay. Throw it out for 12 months. Okay. Divided uh, by 9, multiplied by 12, came out to 28. Oh, 28. I'm sorry. I see. You said 18. You said 18. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Uh, that gen generally, most of these figures are not of the kind that you would anal annualize because yeah. um, I'm, uh, I'm dealing with matters as they come up. Uh, the reason why this figure is higher is that I these are, there may be a few items that I project will require the use of outside counsel for this next year, and that's how you get to that figure, based on my experience. <coughs> and you do see, by the way, in that same uh, outside counsel segment of the budget, we're down in terms of collective bargaining from 35000 to uh, $10,000. That. That's because of the use of inside counsel for collective bargaining as part of a team. Yeah. Um, we this year our uh, five out of six collective bargaining agreements are being discussed. Um, again, it's 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 possible that there might be some need for outside counsel, but uh, so far that hasn't proven to be the case, and that's why you see a zero to date. You could annualize that figure, and I'd be happy. Um. And. Uh, in any event, that's why, uh, again, $10,000 is a, a prudent contingency in my view, but I rec recognize that we're achieving a great savings in-house. Uh, the other labor costs, again, uh, having a full time, having a um, in-house human resources director is dealing with problems ahead of time, and that's why you see a, a projected reduction from $20,000 to $10,000. So we're recognizing the likely savings there. And uh, to date, we're actually only $293. So uh, this, is, this is just recognizing contingencies um, as best we can ahead of time. Hmm. Now that other labor cost, Mark? Yes. That, why would, that's, that's, uh, I saw in here in the book that that's contracted services? Yes. Why wouldn't that go in to the outside council fees type thing? Um, in past, uh, that has been a much more significant line item. <coughs> other labor costs. Other labor costs. For many years, uh, beginning in 2005, uh, there were significant expenditures for outside council de dealing with a number of labor grievances. Uh, we are, and that lasted for uh, at one time, that figure um, was m was much higher, over a hundred thousand dollars, and that lasted for several years. Obviously, we're defending those; we don't create them, but they're yeah. being defended. That's not the situation now. 
and uh, not anticipated to change. <coughs> yeah, so you've got some contingencies baked in here, right? Yes. And I was wrong. The outside council fees, I have, I, I got some arrows here. Outside council fees were, uh, if I look at this thing again here, were, it's 21, 21K year to date. Sure. Annualized, that'd probably be what, 24 or thereabouts. And, but you are asking for 50k, and that's based off of some projections on your part. Experience, and it's not and it's not a figure that's X amount per month. It's yeah. based on the cases we're going to be facing. Okay. Just as an example, uh, one of those cases happens to be one that we don't see very often, nor do the courts see very often. It's a layout uh, of uh, a road case. This involved the selectmen for a number of months approximately six months worth of hearings and so forth and um, we utilized in that the services of attorney Peter Laughlin and uh, I contemplate that if this matter goes to trial uh, we probably will need that service again that's an example well you know that was I was reviewing the budget I saw litigation expenses uh, we budgeted 5,000 and we only spent 480 and I said that's a good thing <laughs> We're litigating less than we were at one time. Uh, yes, actually, um, yes, that's true. I remember we had large litigation expenses. Yes. Relatively speaking. Yeah. So it is a good thing. And uh, 2014 was 3K, and 2013 was 13K. But you're, at, you're asking for five, and again, that's uh, giving yourself some buffer room in there. Yes, and again, you never quite know what you're going to face. Most of these are on we the defensive. We don't have balls. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you've done a pretty good job with your budget, Mark. I mean, in terms of uh, 015, the year that we're in, I didn't think I didn't think that uh, you'd be able to, you know, just do it by yourself, essentially, because you know your partner died, uh, and uh, I saw 1,700 hours that had to be backfilled in my own mind, you know, and uh, it didn't happen. So, uh, so you got a tighter budget and uh, good luck. Thank you. I'm done. Yeah. Just a couple quick questions, which I hopefully will inspire quick responses. I heard you mention the uh, abatement issue, 650 some thousand at risk. I understood that the legal expenses for that were actually from the assessing line item, not from this line item. Am I wrong? The uh, expert costs are indeed there. The reason for that, obviously, is that whenever you get an expert report in that case, case of that type, it's, it goes directly into, a, it plugs directly into the assessing uh, figures mm -hmm. or properties. It's really their expense. Right. Yes. So it, it, it's not really topical for the legal line item, is, is my thinking. Yes, is that that's accurate? correct. Okay, thank you. That was um, a quick answer. Yeah, that's what we like. That it too? No. Going back quickly, a couple of years ago, we, we had you, we had no clerk or anything, then we hired uh, Wanda for a legal, paralegal status, I, I believe. Well, Wanda, Park kind of thing. Wanda started in 2003 with me at the same okay. exact right. time. Mm -hmm. And well, then she worked her way up through to become uh, assistant town attorney. And uh, then we hired our uh, then 16 hour per week um, uh, secretarial staff. And of course, then Wanda deceased in 2014. So the 16-hour staff that you're referring to was already in play when Wanda was here? Yes. Okay, so we had two attorneys at that time plus this clerk. When Wanda, when Wanda uh, left, um, we then replaced her position with the assistant town manager, and we kept the existing clerk, right? That's good. Well, her, okay. her, her, her f the functions that Wanda was performing uh, were spread through several people, actually. Primarily the assistant town manager. Uh, in the sense that one of the focuses she had was personnel matters, that's yeah. true. Yeah. And then... Uh, and uh, union contract negotiations as well, right? That's me. 
No, I thought the assistant town manager was active in that area. At least he was us, last year. Yeah. Both of us, uh, there's a team of three right. of us who yeah. are doing that, yeah. and I'm on that team. And so isn't the assistant town manager? Right? Correct, okay. absolutely. Who else is on that team? Um, the selectman being this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Brian? Um, I just have one quick question. Um, well, maybe two. Um, the law library, is that just a fee? I'm sorry? The law library on 3910, I mean, I'm sorry, 6100. Yes, that's part of that, yes. That's just a fee? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, we get by with a lot for less. Mm -hmm. um, there is a set of the RSA statutes. Um, there are some um, specialized treatises dealing with areas of the law that I deal with a lot. Uh, civil procedure, uh, uh, zoning. Is this like copies? Or no, these are books that were purchased. Uh, the town already had a set of the RSA books when I got here. But those, as, as anyone who deals with these books will tell you, one of the bigger cost of them is the updates. Yeah. It doesn't cost so much to buy them, but to update them, which is critical, it costs a significant amount. Same with us. Yeah. So the breakdown of, you see, actually, of the... Uh, of the seven thousand forty-five dollars, uh, by experience, three thousand of that, three thousand and fifty, is the law library. Okay. In terms of case law, that actually is something that I get, if you want to call it free, with my bar dues. Any member of the bar gets to uh, to uh, access what's called case maker, yes. which is uh, the equivalent of uh, Lexis or Westlaw. So that gives you access to cases from around the country without having to have the library right. right there. It's a big cost saver in private practice, but especially for a practice like this. Um, that's great, and thank you for this budget. Sure. Thank and you. I want to admit, I can't be happier with your supplies and expenses because that's one of, them, one of my crazy things. Great to hug that tree. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, hi, Mark. Hello. I've got a couple of questions. I see you, your, your salary line, you're asking for a one and a half percent increase. Uh, no, no, I'm not. Hmm? No, no, I'm no, not. No. That's, that's an increase that's already been uh, built in when the oh, selectmen okay. took. All right, well, you've got a one. Well, what well, well, you seem to be facing is we see some departments are asking for eight and ten percent, you know. And the taxpayers have just get cut their tax bills, and you know it looks like we'd be heading toward the fall budget. You know, how would you suggest we handle these things? That's one question. Well, Is that a money question? I I, uh, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't dare to uh, encroach on the town manager's province, which is about what people get paid, nor on the collective bargaining process, which is another. <coughs> That that's that's and the selectmen uh, are involved as well. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't dare to step on anybody's toes with answering yeah, that. I understand because I know the departments all love you because you know they can instead of them having to make decisions or asking <laughs> the town manager, they bounce it up to you and you know make it a lot easier for them. Often. The other question I have is is something I raised last year. Town of Exit is about the same size as Hampton, right? Uh, no, five hundred people. No, no. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think about population in Hampton, Are you talking about the beach in year-round population. Perhaps we're not that far apart, but we have a population in the summer that gives us second or first in terms of population in the state. We have city-sized problems in Hampton and some unique features that make us very different from most anyone else. Yeah, okay. and, and we generate for the state of New Hampshire a significant amount of their rooms and meals taxes we don't get that back. we don't get back. Yeah. And that's the injustice of it all. But uh, we, we have, no question, some unique features in Hampton. We have a whole set of leased land uh, 
problems that we don't see anywhere else. Uh, we, we have a unique situation. It's a, a great place to live and work, but it has different problems yeah. than an Exeter. Uh, you know, I, I looked at the annual report in Exeter. You know, their budget for legal expense, they don't have a full-time council. It's 70000 They had an actual for 2014 of 113 and their budget is about $16 million, and we're $26 million, so. Yeah. Well, and believe it or not, I've had some conversations with the extra town manager over time, and he's looked at me and said, I wish we had someone like you here. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank, I, thank you. thank you. May I give you, uh, there's something, unfortunately, this is, this is bedtime reading. But worth reading. What is it, Mark? Uh, one of the seminars I recently attended uh, on municipal law had um, one of the attorneys there reported that there had been a case coming out of the Carroll County Superior Court uh, which uh, involved the town of Sandwich. And it involved uh, situations where uh, a party was challenging actions by the Zoning Board of Adjustment and by the Selectmen uh, on a, a land use matter and uh, issued a right to no law request uh, to find out what emails had been issued. And it turns out that the uh, in-between meetings, uh, the Zoning Board of Adjustment Chairman had sent out not just an informational email saying we're going to meet on X date or here is material we're going to discuss. The email was out there discussing what the position was or what it might be <coughs> in between meetings. And the, the Superior Court here found that sending such an email really constitute from one member to all others, even if it got no response, was a meeting under the right to no law, an illegal meeting because the public did not have a chance to view it. And so what happened was the Superior Court found that these kind of emails are illegal under the right to no law, invalidated the decisions that were made involving those emails ordered attorney's fees on the part of the town to be paid and ordered that the boards in question undergo remedial training in the right to no law. And so uh, whenever now I run across a board here in town, I bring this case to their attention and say, look out for this. Emails are so easy to use. It's so easy to copy all. Uh, it's, 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 sometimes tempting to go from one person to another and, and discuss things. And this case is a real concrete example of what can happen if you use emails that way. It's better not to. That's the moral of the story because uh, just the poundage of this case shows how much was, was cost to the town of, of Sandwich. I'm sure their legal fees, uh, not only theirs, but the other sides that they had to pay uh, were quite <coughs> significant. Um, and also, I would say that they, too, got to the point of, of uh, finding, the judge found that their, a decision that had been made by the Board of Selectmen must have been made involving discussions that occurred outside the context of the meeting. Those decisions were invalidated, too. So again, I'm telling every board that I meet about this case. Um, I don't think it's being appealed to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. Uh, cases that the Superior Court don't have quite the same precedential value, but this is one of the younger judges. I think he, it's likely that uh, if we did something like Sandwich did, we'd find ourselves in the same pickle, and I'd love for us to avoid it. Thank you very much for the illustration. Mm -hmm. We spend quite a bit of time at the beginning of the year talking about emails and what not to put in, sure. not to put in but um, always seeing a case in action is a good example. Um, I trust that everybody will have good reading, but we'll sleep tight tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. I picked up the key phrase, or one of the key phrases you employed was, because the emails were not available to the public. Well, no. Actually, uh, I think these emails probably had someone requested it. They were governmental records. Right. So those would be subject to being turned over. But no, no, no. We were referring to the... Um, 
the implication that the exchange was not done in public because the emails were not available to the public. Right. The, the key thing that so, the, the court did with this one, it said that emails offer <coughs> the ability for simultaneous responses right. between the members that are emailing. And those are not available to the public. Not available to the right. public. That's yeah. right. So an, an electronic mechanism which is available to the public would not be an issue, apparently. Because that would qualify wouldn't be in play. If, if, if For example, if we all decided we're not going to write emails, we'll just send letters to the editor. That's available to the public, no problem, right? Well, this, this addresses the communication among board members. That's the key, among the board members themselves. Right, but making them available to the public, this is a not, not an issue. Well, it, it, uh, now it's I can write a letter to the I can write a letter to the editor, can I? Oh, sure. Of course. And I can I can take a, my, my I can even state my position as a budget committee member in there, right? Could no violation of the law whatsoever, right? It uh, well it may be it may be an inappropriate thing to do, and I'd be inclined to believe that. It depends but on. But it wouldn't be an illegal thing to do. Would it? it depends on what you wouldn't be illegal under the right to know law. Let's put it that way. That sounds that's context of my question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> as long as you didn't discuss it with us. No, no. If I put it and it's available to everyone view, then it's okay, right? Right. It's okay. uh, but it's not. That would not be a communication directly to other board members. That right. It's just available to everybody. Available right. to everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. Just wanted to make that clear. Of course. course. We can still have our right to speak in public. You can. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions on the budget itself? No, we're done with the budget itself, right? Well, just any other budget questions. There we go. Yeah, how much did it cost to print this out and is it available digitally? Well, uh, don't answer that. <laughs> thank you, Mark. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in, Mark. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much. Yes, thank thanks you. for uh, Have a wonderful evening. Take me a little earlier. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Good night. Good night. Good night. I don't want to go down a rat hole. Sorry. That was a valid question. <coughs> don't just misplace it. Hmm. All right. Um, well, next, let's move on to financial administration. Thank you. Financial administration. And Christy and Fred, if you want to join us, that would be page four. In OBS two. I have to say this flipping back and forth mm. is awkward. Take it out. Huh? Take it out of the book and lay it up there. Uh, yeah. When I used to be able to just look left and right. Exactly. I don't have any old. I That's like right. I like it this way because it's. I we never saw. You never saw. We used to be able to just do this yeah. and see it all. Yeah, I like it because you know you can have to change your motion and you're not subject to repetitive stress syndrome. I don't have an issue with that. All right, Christy. What's the point of paper? Over to you. Are we starting with financial We're administration? Starting with financial order? administration. Okay. Yes. Um, it's up a total of 0.49 percent. Uh, the biggest change there, I think, is in the let's see, the postage meter. However, uh, if you look at the explanation on page number five, it's just telling you that. In essence, the cost hasn't changed. It's just how it was budgeted. It used to be budgeted, a portion of it was in um, the postage meter rental, which is still here. And then another portion was in equipment maintenance. Um, but it didn't make sense to have it that way. We have a new postage meter, we have a lease on it, and it made sense to me to move it into the same line item. Other than that, um, there is an increase in here for um, the treasurer. I put in $500 like we did last year. She hasn't had an increase, I think, since 2012. So that is in there. And all of the other lines are either at zero or down. Regular wages or part-time wages is also up 1.49%. 1.5%, which is in relationship to the non-union raises that the employees um, received today, this year, the one and a half percent. 
Mm. And question. Yes. Everything on the postage meter. Yes. There's no change, but yet postage went up. No, it says it was previously budgeted under equipment. I mean, postage itself went up. The postage line itself went up. No, no, postage itself uh -huh. went up. The cost, the cost of a stamp went up. Ten percent. That's not in the postage meter rental line. That's what I was talking to. Okay, so um, the postage line. We did not increase that line item in the budget right. because I based it on what we were have been actually spending this year, and. So we spent in 14. Possibly you were over budgeted before. Possibly. I think usually that's one of the ones we annualize out and see where we're at and take a, our best <coughs> guess. Um, it was at 37, 4, 10, uh, in 15, and that's what I put it forward to in, uh, for 16. Okay, just asking, because in general that did go up. Um, right. Almost 10 percent, so I would have expected. Right. And if you annualize out what we've spent this year so far um, through September, we're at 35,642. So we should be under budget there. So hopefully we'll be okay. Okay, thank you. And the employees whose wage you're looking to boost a little bit, she's not part of. It's the treasurer. The treasurer. Yes. Okay. How much was that? $500? Yes. Yeah, thank you. That's 2.7%. I did not do the percentage. Uh, yes, 2.7%. Yes, it is. And the treasurer who was elected? Yes. Yes. Can I ask a question? Okay. Um, I'm not going to hog the show. Questions? You're talking about the treasurer. Yes. Um, was that. Didn't you put in last year for a raise for her? Yes, and she didn't get it. Didn't get it. Right. When was the last time she did get a raise? 2012. And how much was that raise? I think it was 500, but I had to, I'd have to go back and look. Okay. Okay. Just asking. I'm pretty sure it was 500 at that time, though. Thank you. Okay. I saw a jury. Yeah. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, the, so the postage meter rental and the lease that goes with it is, is, is new? It's not new. It used to just be budgeted in two lines, and so I'm not sure why it was budgeted that way. So when I was doing the budget this year, yeah. it made sense to me to have it all in the same line. Why have one of it in equipment maintenance and part of it in postage meter rental? Just because it was two separate bills, it was still for the same machine. Where else was it? Because it was in equipment maintenance prior yeah, to the all right. budget. So we should see the decrease up there. Maintenance. Is that yes? The deep down. The point of maintenance went down five point one eight percent. So this is not a new machine. It, the machine itself is new. Yes. Okay, that's a new machine and a new lease type of thing as well. Correct. Okay. And basically, you you, you dropped your equipment maintenance a little bit minus five and, and put it into a put it into this uh, postage line. It is up $700. If you look in my note there, under postage meter on page five, it says that the uh, was pre previously budgeted under equipment maintenance and postage meter rental account for a total cost of $2,215.45. Yeah. So it is, in, it's now 2916 so it's up $700, or a little less than $700, but the reason that this particular line is up so much is because it used to be budgeted in two places. Gotcha. That's why it's, uh, you know, it sticks out. Yeah. 178%. That's why, it, yes, and that's why I pointed that out there in the note. Uh, the registry of deeds uh, looks like it's been bumped a little bit, too. I looked at the last four years, averaged them out. Looked at 215 year to date, and you're running 29, 2197 year to date. Annualizes out to 3592. You're asking 41 4100. Yeah. Uh, got a comment on that, or is this something? Is postage gone up a little bit? Uh, postage has gone up. Registry of deeds is all of the different recordings that we do, and with all the building and. Yeah. So, I mean, we cover that for everyone except for, I think, planning. Everyone else comes out of our budget, like the tax collector, if she has to send anything. Um, so this legal, might be do the I mean, volume or do, do the increased business activity, you're saying? 
You get revenue for that, Christy? Do any revenue come in? Uh, some of it. At least the tax collector may get a little. Tax collector gets some of it. Yeah. You got to remember that every time we send out a delinquent notice, we have to check the registry of deeds because it's got to go to the, the mortgage holders as well. So, if we release a lien, and they've all got to go certified mail, so that's up as well. Okay. Would all the beach type of condo development affect this as well? Or? That would be under the planning board, and they usually pay their own, I believe. That's a fee coming that yeah. comes into the planning board. Okay. They have to pay for their own recording, but we do. They spend a lot um, more than that than we do. During the course of the year, we're always at the registry looking at issues and problems uh, with individual liens or individual easements or, or deeds where problems arise. I mean, the bump is just, it's not, it's not, you know, it's, it's just a moderate, it's less than moderate, but I just was curious about it. Well, yeah. they have increased their fees over the last few years, too. Yeah. Uh, bank service charges, you're asking 35000 Again, that's above your... Uh, this one's based back to last year. Goes back to the story from last year in regards to it had been coming, it hadn't uh, been budgeted correctly. We put the line in um, last year. I think we had uh, bank service charges. We had Thirty-six thousand last year. Well, you were defaulted into that, right? No, that's what we spent. Oh yeah. Last year it was thirty-six thousand six seventy-seven. Uh, the treasurer. It has been moving money around in different ways to right. minimize those expenses, but we don't know what they will be. Yeah, so. we did spend uh, thirty-six six six seventy-seven in fourteen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and year to date, and this year is twenty-one six. On that one, when that's we, only through August, though. Even though it's no. Except, no, it's through August because of the fact that when I did the September numbers, I don't have my the, the bank statement from the, the treasury yet. Statement there. Correct. I got you. So what was it in September? I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Is that something that could be forecasted in December, that particular line? Yes. All right. We get we'll have a better, ha better hand right, as, we get, as we get closer to that. Um, I mean, this year we're on track to spend 32479 according to... 32479 Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're almost at yeah, the Sometimes those charges come in all at one time, the way the banks Correct. Charge. And as the cash flow slows down when we're waiting for tax bills to come out, she doesn't have as much money to, move to keep into the account to uh, minimize those charges. So in October and November, or even September, October, November, the bank service charges could go up foreseeably compared to July when the cash flow was much better. I know we've talked about it before. Is there any avenue to negotiate that down? We shop, shop to last year. We've tried. You know what we we're told was it's going to be that or more because we're going to continue to raise the fees. Right, and that's when she started to manage. Have we shopped this year? We shopped the last two years, yeah. trying trying to find a bank that will give us. We deposit millions of dollars a year into these banks, and what yeah. they say is, no, you're going to pay. We're well, going to charge you. I feel for like over the beginning of this year, when we so. uh, met with uh, TD Bank and yeah. Provident, I believe Ellen and I met with both of those right. banks, and I feel like it was in the um, beginning of 2015. It was Among the end of positive. 14, beginning yeah. of 15. Okay. We have some new banks in town. Have we tried Kennebunk? And hmm? We've tried all the banks. What about the credit Fred? They don't have the. Um, I can't remember the name. They don't have the legal thing that. Sh the credit union is not certified. They have to be a national bank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, just one, other, one other question. Uh, advertising. You're yeah. asking thirty-five hundred. Yep. I knew that was going to come up. I looked at that um, account uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and I noticed when I looked at that that there are several advertisements that um, were booked under the Board of Selectmen Supplies and Expense Account, and I believe that that was incorrectly done. Um, when I look back at what Mike had been doing, he had been absorbing the cost for all of the Board of Selectmen advertising, and so I plan to do a journal entry to move um, the advertisements that were charged into the charged supplies. And they were charged in supplies and expenses, which you, under the Board of Selectmen, is uh, overspent at this point. And um, when I was doing some research because I knew someone was going to ask about that mm -hmm. and um, Good. there's a lot of advertising over in the Board of Selectmen budget that needs to be moved. So when what, you do you see your, might, what do you think that might mount to because you only spent When you see your October financials you'll see it because I'm okay, going to do it before, yep, yeah. do it before I do um, 
my October financials, I'm going to go back, research that, and make the journal entry prior to... Um, okay. When you make that change, could I ask you to send me, and I'll distribute it to... It'll be on your financials in October. Uh, no, I, I, since we're talking about this, and want to keep it separate from the budget. Um, just send that to me on the lines that have changed. The advertising amount? Yes. Right. Just so we can keep our books straight. Yeah. She's not saying she's going to change the budget at all. She's. It's just going to be no, the actual. Changes. It's going to be the actual. Everything. Changes. Everything's going to change then. Yeah. I mean, every just number. Notation, if you would, um, on the change. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Answer. That's all I had, Christy. Okay. All right. On this side, any questions, Brian? Um, I just had a couple quick ones. Um, under forty-three hundred. Software service agreements, estimated cost. Can you explain that? Yeah, the repairs, and if you look underneath that, um, let's see. The equipment maintenance, is that what you're referring to? Yes. Okay, the software service agreement is for our financial software. That's an estimate She uh, from our vendor, Interware. So we don't have any real... We have an agreement right now that is slightly up from what it was last year. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did I print that again? I think it's up a little bit from last year. I don't think it's drastic. I don't have. I don't no, think I but have I was just curious. Time. When I see estimated costs, it kind of. That's because she has. Um, when I say she, Interware has not given us the our contract, our service contract for 2016 yet. So what I do is I ask them to give us what they believe the cost is going to be, and that's what she gave me. And it's only a one-year contract? We don't go over It's a one-year maintenance that. agreement with the software company. Um, under 6250 postage, 6250. why are we taking everything out of your department for Always postage? Have. Always have, as long as I've been here, I believe. I can't swear to that, but I've been here 18 years, and I think postage has always come out of finance, and every finance director probably cried yeah. because it always does. But Don't change it. Now it's just the way it's always been. Well, like, I mean, Everyone wants everything it. centralized, so it's kind of yeah, good exactly. that postage is right there, right? Yeah, that's all I need was the explanation, and yeah. I'm set with it. Thank you. She's right in line with 014, 015 mm -hmm. spending. Right. Correct. Yeah. But when I see everybody's coming out of one... The Even the tax bills are in yep. there, too. That's all I need was an explanation. Thanks. Yep. Even the tax bills. Okay. Well, they're, they're listed out there for you, yeah. the tax bills. Any other questions on financial administration? Sonny, anybody? Yeah, hi, on page 13, I see your general expenses, uh, general budgets for 2016, 8.77 million. On page 13. We're on page 4 right now. It's page 13. We're not moving. Page 13? Total. I'm just curious if I see you on the health issue. Yeah, you're yeah, losing us, Sonny. Yeah. We're out, we're oh, he's doing the whole general government, I believe, if he referred to yeah, the $8 right. million. Are you referring to the $8,775,000? No? No. Yeah. On okay. page 13, $8,775,000. Yeah. That's general, total general government. That's true, yeah. 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 Total. Sonny, you should either be on page um, 4 or OBS 2 yeah. and 3. That's, that's total general government. That's, uh, that's uh, cemeteries. Oh, part that's of everybody. Cemeteries. You're well, right. my question really is: you're, you're building, you know, on the health insurance, you're building in a five percent increase. I'm just curious how much it is over last year. We're not talking about insurance. Yeah, yet, that's another topic. Yeah. Another category. Right now, we're talking about financial administration. Administration, right. not the insurance. The insurance will insurance come. Insurance is coming up in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it's coming up. All right. This is the next topic. Tim. Hi. Good evening, Christine. Good evening. Um, the postage, you have a machine there. I would assume it has some electronics <coughs> to it, but we could perhaps do some breakdown as to who's using the machine. So we can actually not just have one big black box number. <coughs> yeah, we can um, set it up for the, whoever's running the mail, because everyone doesn't run their own mail. Mm -hmm. The majority of the time, the mail is run by the administrative assistant. If she's not there, then usually someone from finance will run it. Right. So we just run it all through. If we want to separate it out, we can separate it out, but that's just going to take more time. But we have the capabilities on the machine mm -hmm. to separate out and say, this amount was police, this amount was fire. 
But punch then we have to separate it out and then do each. Just a matter of punching it in a code for right. Right. what you want to count it for. That's doesn't mm-hmm. sound like a lot of work to punch in a code when you want to send something out. Depends on how much mail you have. Well, I'm assuming you're doing it in batches rather than one at a time. So. Well, usually it's all just in a basket. We take the basket, we put it on, boom, to mm-hmm. send it out. Mm-hmm. We would have to separate it out into piles so, and then make I sure. Like the, I like the centralized operation. Uh, what, I, what I don't, what's not appealing is, is the invisibility that it creates. And, and we can overcome that invisibility with using the codes. And uh, mm-hmm. I think that would be a step forward, though a small one. I would appreciate that consideration on that. Um, that's, not an, that's not an automatic thing. Thank you, Jerry. You had your time. I know. I'm just asking about the small uh, The uh, national bank, uh, Fred mentioned, is required to be a national bank. What is the, what's the source of that requirement? Who, is that a Fed thing? State law. State law requires to be a national national bank, yes, as opposed to a yeah. national credit union. For instance, we can't deposit money into uh, a, a, a state chartered bank unless it's also a nationally chartered bank. Now, the exception to that is Massachusetts, because the Massachusetts banks insure deposits to one hundred percent, regardless of the amount of money. So that there's a regulatory function there that's put out by the state of New Hampshire to make sure the money that we have in is, in fact, safeguarded and insured. So the require is the requirement about uh, it being placed in a federally insured account. Is that the requirement? It's a federally insured account. Um, Massachusetts is the exception because they have both insurance, right. state and federal. And what we do is we roll that money every night because federal insurance only goes to a limit if it's in a New Hampshire bank. Yeah, uh, the reason I'm asking is because I, uh, I know that the credit unions offer federal insurance also. Yeah, but they're not certified by the state. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. So this is a state thing that's going to have to do with sort it's of... It's a state regulation. It's kind of like the governor having to declare emergency in order for an emergency to be existent. Something like that, yeah. <laughs> and if she doesn't, she's qualified to run for U.S. Senate, right? <laughs> Okay. Most anything. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The success of politics today. All right. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Christine. Yeah, Kristen. Yes, going back to your postage meter. The postage the, meter? Yes. Um, that's under lock and key, correct? It's electronically it a lock, locked. Is it, a, yeah. it has okay. a passcode to get into it, yes. Okay, okay. Because that, in order to, uh, um, so that you can curtail abuse, um, it's usually done centralized the way you are doing it. Not everybody's in there running mail through a machine. They're putting their own personal mail in and everything else, and that's the reason probably why it's done the way it's done. And if you had to separate piles out all over the place, and so you have three envelopes from fire and, and six from somebody else and a few others from... I can see how that would end up... You'd have to, you'd have to hire a part-time or just run the machine, you know? I, I, the one I'm familiar with from work had a automatic feed. You just put the pile there and they go through yes. and you're done. Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Hi, Ben. All right, let's move on now to Personnel Administration, page 9 in OBS 5. Really because I'm going to add up the questions there, but uh, most of that stuff, most of the lines that have increases there are ones that we don't have control over, like the retirement system, um, Medicare, Social Security, those are all wage related. And those are all definite figures that are not subject to change at this point in time. Not unless the wage line changes. I mean, if wage lines change, then the um, anything from Social Security down would change. <coughs> but these percentages that are shown here are firm right now. Correct. Yes. Yes. And the retirement went to our firm mm-hmm. also. The, that is the new rate as of July 1 of uh, okay. 15. Okay. It's your Scott. Um, what drives the employee separation cost? Um, basically what I look at when I budget for that line item, I look at, I reach out to the three big departments and ask who they, who's eligible to retire, who do they uh, think might retire, and then I use 25, 50, 75, and 100% based on feedback from them, take the individual's leave balances, whoever that employee is, 
and depending on the likelihood of retirement, I calculate out you know what their um, payout would be if they were to leave in the uh, coming year. Okay. okay. It's a, a guesstimate? It is a guesstimate, yes. But it tends to run right in line fairly close to with that $212,000. Yeah, so. 212, 212, 200, yeah. 203, 212, you know, so it's, yeah. it's, it's right there. She's in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. When we get to December, you'll be able to give us a forecast on this year, pretty much. For 15? Yeah. Yep. Because okay, now I see us well at 106. Yeah, at 106. Yeah, but I think there could be a couple more coming down the mm -hmm. line before the end of the year, possibly. Okay. I mean, I don't know for sure, but right. Yes, at the end of the year, we will have a better grasp on the actuals. You know, we'll know. I'll be able to. Um, we'll know what the spending was for 15 on that line. Now let me ask you this: if Say it remains at 106, and a couple of people we thought would be retiring don't. Can the balance of that line be encumbered into next year? Because I would assume if they those individuals were eligible to retire this year, they're even more eligible to retire next year. Usually, the encumbrance has to be an expense that you have a contract for. Okay. It's got to be an incurred expense in the year, in the year for which it's encumbered. Right. So if they retired after January 1, it would be in the following year's appropriation. Mm -hmm. What we do with those funds that are left is at the discretion of the board, they're permitted to put those into the compensation fund. Okay. So in essence, it's escrowed, and if they need the money, they can simply go withdraw it to support the fund. Now that was set up by town meeting a number of years ago. Compensation fund? Yeah. The compensated absence fund is what yeah. he's referring to that's held by the trustees. I have the, oh, it's held by the, yep. yeah, the compens it's compensated. It's leave. a compensated leave mm -hmm. trust fund. Oh, right. is that what it is, Fred? Yep. Right. That's what you're talking about, correct? Do that's we know, correct. Do, we, do we know how much is in We do. I brought that with me tonight. So if we had a year that, say, we were underfunded uh, mm -hmm. and you had more than more people than anticipated retire you would go to that fund yes for the differential that's yeah. correct so we wouldn't we wouldn't try to be supporting it out of the general budget because it just doesn't really work mm -hmm. um, well it can be a lot of money for just one person well we're constantly looking at the situation because and i'll give you a for instance um the retirement system had a very poor year for investments this year, mm -hmm. and, and the amount of money they received was way down. Uh, there's some question about whether or not uh, they will come back with a, an adjustment to the retirement rates. Before the end of the year? Yeah. There's also some question about whether or not the legislature would have to take some action to, uh, to change some of the requirements in the retirement law. If that happens, we're in serious trouble because the, the fund won't pay for it. We have a potential of about 1.4 million mm -hmm. outstanding in obligations under the union contracts that we would have to pay. And people who are up there at uh, their 20-year retirement base or over, mm -hmm. they could all walk out the door the following day mm -hmm. or the day after the, like, the one of the houses <coughs> of the legislature acted. And then we would be obligated to pay all that money out. When, would, when would they make that change, hopefully? Would they do it this year, or would they do we it? We don't know. There's, there's constant talk about how they're going to adjust things. It right. depends on how the system But if the town set their budgets, and they get approved in March, and they come and do this in April. They're free right? to do this anytime they want. <laughs> okay. We're going to run to the compensated leave fund. How much is that? that? I it's was going to tell you, that, as of 831.15, the report I have from the trustees, and the compensated leave fund is two hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred three dollars and six cents. Could you repeat that one more time, please? Two ninety-two. Yeah. Six zero three point oh six. Thanks. Jerry. Yep. You jumped all over Tim here by hands, guys. Okay, please, Tim. Um, my uh, only topic in personal administration is about improving some visibility here. Um, and I just use that as an example, but it really applies to all of the employees uh, to one degree or another. I use by example the deputy tax collector, which was converted from part time to full time last year. So we learned that at uh, last week's meeting, if you may recall. And by example, uh, we had uh, the, the tax collector telling us that she had enough money in her part time wages to pay for her full time pay that year and that the rest of the cost, relative to the benefits and so forth, went into personnel and it was not visible to her. 
as a consequence. It was also not visible to anyone else. Uh, but obviously, you have to do a calculation to bump up personnel administration when that an event like that occurs, correct? When I did this budget? No, no, when you did this budget. Uh, I, there was no correction to meet the budget last year. You didn't. You didn't add any money for the for the change from part time to full time status for the deputy tax collector. On these line items. Mm -hmm. yes. For the 015 budget, he's talking. Oh, on the 015 so budget, yes, because the position was in place in 14, I believe, the fall of 14. Mm -hmm. So when the 015 budget was done, I believe so. Isn't that when the deputy became? That's right. I yeah, think September. Yes, September 2014. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. And so when we the 15 budget was made, <coughs> she was her wages were in the budget, which in on the regular wage line or part-time wage line in the tax collector's budget, which in turn calculates over into these accounts. Right, and there was a calculation exercise you had to go through for her, correct? For every wage line. Right. And but that, it occurred to me. I'm just using her as an example. I don't mean to be, you know, you know uh, well, it's by here, but It's grouped to, by department, though. So right. for in that department, since they're different wage lines, it, it's very clear in regards to that department but in another department like even mine even though there's only four of us it wouldn't be easy to see because of the fact that all of our wages are on the same line and then it calculates out the retirement the uh, FICA Social Security and Medicare mm -hmm. so it would be a relatively simple calculation to report that uh, out when we when we do a particular department for example it's 6.2, 1.45, and depending, group one is at a uh, employee portion is at 11.17%. Well, yeah, right. We've got a number of things in here uh, Social Security, Medicare, retirement. Yeah. And then retirement, yeah. Retirement. yeah. So, and that would be all. So if those are just simple percentages based on, yeah. the, based on pay, then it would be probably sufficient, at least in the short term, to put the per percentages in parentheses on these line items in personnel administration so that we were then able to have the intelligence to do our own calculations? Yeah, I think in the um, detail section it does have that, those percentages. They can be added to that front page though. I'm pretty sure in the detail under personnel administration it has the percentages right there. Okay. On page number eight, nine, sorry, page nine, it has all the percentages. That's correct. That's not OBS nine, that's just no, plain old nine. Nine, it's in the book nine. Nine. Old nine. Yeah. Oh, nine. Not OBS nine. The, the, the plain old nine, yeah. yeah. Number nine. I mean, that could be added if you're asking if it could be added right after Social Security and Medicare on those lines right there. Then a parenthesis with those percentages could be added to that very. Right. Easily, for me, yes. for me, it would be ideal to have some sort of notation within each department as to the total. Uh, Is that in every department, Christy? Cost of, of uh, employment as opposed to just the wages they're receiving. You know? Have you put that notation in every department? No, because it's only all of the uh, Social Security, Medicare, and retirement is under personnel administration. So it's all the same. Okay. So it is there broken. Uh, well, group well, two is. She's saying that she, that each of these line items, you know, uh, Social Security, Medicare, et cetera, they all have a fixed percentage regardless of what pay you receive. Right. With the exception of Social Security, which is not, right? Social Security is 6.2%. The employer share does not have a ceiling on it, but the employee share does, right? So that that is a flat all the way across, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So it's a flat percentage for each of these line items here. She says it's specified on page nine, which I assume to be true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we have to go through a calculation to figure that out. And I'm just saying it would be, and I can do that calculation on my own. It's not a big deal. But it would be really good if we could actually see within each department the actual cost of the payroll and not just the payments we're making in a paycheck. So you would want Social Security, Medicare, and retirement in each of the departmental yeah, as, budgets as a kind that has a, wages. As a kind of a notation, not necessarily as part of the line item itself in terms of its number. Uh, just to give visibility to the actual true cost of the employment. Um, so uh, that's just a thought. I, just a thought. I'm not, I, I'm not making any demands. I don't make demands. I'm not making a motion either, okay? This, but I, I am. I am. I've been educated, as everyone else has, that these flat percentage numbers are available on page nine, and we can do our own calculations. Okay. Moving Thank on. you, Christy. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on personnel administration? No, I have. I have uh, Jerry, and then Brian. You know, what is the difference? Uh, what is the difference between the retirement funds? Uh, even 2300 and, and the other one of, of 502 500. 
You have 41552, 2300, and, uh, and 41552320. That's put, uh, the 2300 is for Group 1, yeah. which is all your municipal employees, which includes Public Works, yeah. um, and then Town Office, not library because they're not in this. It includes section, public have, works. Yes, anyone who's a group one member it, is public works. Uh, to all full-time employees in the town office, plus your secretaries, and like police and fire. Police and fire, I thought was group one, but I wasn't no, sure. No, police and fire is not group one. Police and fire is group two. Group two, my like three. Yes. Okay, I got it. So back group with one it. is um, any municipal employee. Is okay. The best way to put any, it. But any, there any is municipal. municipal employees spread out in every department in the town. Okay. Uh, what is the other one then? Then group two is the 2320 group two for police and then 2330 is group two for fire. The reason that the group two are separated out is because they have different percentages. Yes. Um, let's see, police right now is at 26.38% uh, and that's on page 10 yeah. and fire is at 29.16%. And the, uh, the note that That's I why they're separated out. Yeah, okay. So if it was all in one, then you would not have uh, I got you. Citizen I got Jones' you. request to have the percentages separate and have you. it clear to be able to see. I right. would they make a note, though. There's a couple of million bucks. Because if retirement was lumped together, you would have an average percentage as opposed to having the actual. There's two million bucks, roughly, in the police and fire retirements. I don't think it's changed drastically from the year before, though. Let's see. Seven, no, that's about right. Yep. Remember, we don't set those. Yes, that's right. why the state. I know. I'm just saying it's... There are some things we cannot do anything about. Um, theoretically. Right, but we should know about them anyway. At this table. That's, uh, that's, that's the kind of thing, though. At this table. You know the right. percentages in front of you. It, it should motivate you to do it in other places. However, at this table, sometimes some of these figures we have to look at. Okay. Any other questions, Brian? I just have one quick one. Um, compensation to the reserve fund. Is this all we want to always do this is by one article? I believe that is the plan. To, Are you if talking we're about to add money to it? Yes. It would be by, through a Warren article or? Add money to what? The compensated um, The compensated fund. reserve fund right. would either be transferred out of. Uh, 9-11 and 9-12 in this account, if there's any money left at the end of the year, or it can be appropriated, or it could be transferred with surplus. Okay. So it could be in the budget if that's the way that... I just noticed going through the past years that it's never been in the budget. I think so they tried to put it in the budget at one idea. time and it did not pass. We attempted to get the account established uh, a number of years ago, and uh, the town turned it down. Mm -hmm. uh, we were successful a couple of years later in getting it established. At that point, there were no funds raised, but the opinion of the council and the attorney general's office and the retirement folks was that, and the unions was that, uh, if there is any unspent money in 9/11 and 9/12, it could be transferred to that account because it is a holding account for those two purposes. That's where I'm still confused why it isn't. It's a holding account for employee separation costs and sick and buyback program. Right. I mean, that's it's the, all right, that program. That's, that's, that's where that money is, is paid out when, if you run it into deficit. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. One last question, Tim, and then we're going to move on to municipal insurance. Holding account. I'm confused. What is that? I, all I see here is a subline item. Why is it this uh, holding account and the other subline item is not holding account? That's the only two accounts that can be used to transfer to the permanent account held by the trustees. Okay. You can't take it out of any other accounts. It's the way it's set up. Okay, so there is a, a trust fund. Yes, there is. It comes to the custodianship of the trustees of the trust funds. Correct. And that particular trust fund uh, was created by one article, presumably, right. which requires that it get funds from it's, uh, this particular subline item? We can take it from this subline item because that fund funds these subline items if you run over it. How oh, I see. So it's a debit credit kind of thing. Yeah, it's a got it. Do to do from the sort of situation. For clarification, I fully understand. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Madam Chair, just a quick question, please. Yes, sir. The uh, retirement issue, uncompensated or uh, that, that is unfunded, uh, in terms of audit, has that been a, uh, an adverse mark for the town? Not yet. It's not. 
and we have a, a liability that's substantially more uh, on paper or on the balance sheet than what we have and what would you think that is if you know it now it's over a million dollars it is yeah I okay didn't look it up, but I did. and what we do I know there's 1.4 we have 1.4 what do we have uh, in, in the bank now on that 292, 292. whatever 292 a little less than 300,000 yeah less than 300,000 yes the auditors have mentioned it but I don't think it has officially become an adverse opinion yet it has been mentioned by the auditors in there uh, in the letter that they put into the audit but I do not believe that it has appeared as an adverse opinion yet They've indicated the town should take some effort Correct. to continue to fund that and, and remove the, uh, the debt that's included. It's been mentioned on the past several audits. Because it, it does appear that we are, are using a little Kentucky windage on that. Uh, it, uh, it might cause some peril if the scenario that the town manager uh, suggested could happen with uh, a series of retirements. And that would represent, uh, if you would have come anywhere near full funding, it, it's about 4% of our budget today. That's all I have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, if I have uh, a question, mm -hmm. follow up on that. Yeah, yeah, especially since that's a bond. Go ahead. Yeah, Phil. Phil, are you suggesting that perhaps the auditor should make an adverse comment on the uh, audit? I'm, I'm not a CPA. I'm just a selectman and uh, representative of the budget committee, bringing up uh, a point that um, um, was uh, not fully articulated. So not an adverse point then. I I, I don't consider that uh, um, professional aid accounting or uh, budgeting. No, I don't. Oh, that's very, very interesting, because I was a little concerned, and, and this kind of dovetails, I recognize that, but mm -hmm. I seem to recall that we had bids come in, as we do annually, for the auditing firm that we used, and the Board of Selectmen chose to go with the middle bid, not the low bid, presumably to stay with the constant, the same auditor we have year after year after year, and perhaps if we had a different auditor, maybe we would have had a different opinion on that. Uh, that being so said, that being said, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have Do we have an audit finality coming soon? Final audit? Yes. Report? Yes. And do we have a date that that'll be available? Hopefully, very soon. That's we were, we, were, we were working to get all of our fixed assets. That's what the hold up on the audit is. Getting all the uh, so that we can be compliant with GASB 34, which I believe was an adverse opinion of the auditors last year, uh, and we are trying to get, make that disappear. And so we have done a lot of work to become um, compliant with GASB 34. So that's kind of what's been holding it up. We've run into some software glitches and um, okay, things so like that because our software company has fixed assets, but no one has been brave enough to use it. And I was lucky to take that on and. Uh, I think I have put my part of it to bed as of last week, I believe. And now the, I spoke with Scott um, at Plaza yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And um, we should have, they, he was finishing up his review of all of the information. So should we perhaps see that mid month? I would say yes. I right. hope so. Yeah. Just so we all understand that the reason the center bid was taken mm -hmm. was that the low bidder was taken basically our estimate was the finance department would have to be shut down for two weeks in order to do the audit hmm. there was a lot of retraining that would have to go on with the uh, new owner like 180 hours have to learn our system field. we'd have to yeah. show it to them well they they, they have a different process not shut down so but the, the bid was not on the same process then, apparently. that's correct it was it was much more intensive uh, so they, they didn't meet the bid, the bid specifications or our bid specifications weren't specific enough the bid specifications are fairly broad so we, we try to get bids uh -huh. but we we tell them they have to explain what the process is and what they need for time uh -huh. and our that's current good. auditors are here for two or three days uh, they do some pre-audit uh, periodically for a month or so before they arrive and uh, they finish up and there there's always additional things they need from the state of the town yeah. as, well, as the process the state is on. more of a hybrid of a bid for a request for proposal and a request for bid it's kind of a hybrid of those two it is a hybrid yeah, yeah. okay thanks okay all right moving on now to municipal insurance that would be on page 12 and obs 7. <coughs> What areas here, Christy, are holding us up right now? Uh, well, several. Yeah. Not several. Uh, the life insurance, or not life insurance, the liability and general insurance and workers' compensation are holding us up um, for sure. And the fact that we have gotten some estimates from PLT, 
However, they have not, uh, due to their court cases that they're involved in right now, they haven't been uh, relicensed. So as of June 30th of 16, at this moment, they haven't been relicensed to issue insurance. So I am currently working to get at least, I think it's going to end up being three different vendors to give us quotes on that. Um, that's very involved. Um, and I'm hoping to have at least the one from uh, Davis and Toll by, I think he said December 15th. That usually takes 90 days, but he's going to tell the vendors that they have to push it so that we have it for the budget process, at, mm -hmm. even though it's the end. And um, Primex, I'm not sure. I think I will get that one a little quicker. So, All right. So, And the estimates that we do have from PLT are even higher than what I put in the budget. Because when I did the budget, I just did 5% like we do it every year until we get the rates, but according to what we received in an email from them the other day, uh, the property liability estimate that we were giving, um, let's see, went up to 295, 620, oh no, that's what we requested, let's see. It went up to uh, 353, 334, and the workers' comp, um, and this is the estimates from PLT, is 600584 I can't change those because the budget had already been sent out to this level, but that's what we received last at the end of last week, I believe? Correct. Um, from PLT, assuming that that's only an estimate, but then also assuming that they're relicensed. So we know you know they're relicensed. But we're also in a couple weeks, correct? No? We were also going out to Primex. We're yes. going out to Primex, and I, um, Davis and Toll, which does travels, because there, there's only like three different vendors from what my research, three other vendors in re that will house all of it, the property liability plus the workers' compensation, and, um, is it so possible that you piecemeal that? For better, you know, maybe you get a better deal on workers' comp in one area? Well, the rates will come in different, as separate, so I guess you could choose what you wanted to go with. Right. Um, yeah. And then Peerless and Liberty Mutual, I think, are, is the other one. But basically, uh, other than Primex, we're looking at the commercial market. Yes. Primex does not insure all the coverages that we currently have. I, I'm only asking about Primex, and I understand because I've asked this question before. Right. Um, the schools have, um, came before us with quite a savings from Primex. Um, like I said, it's not apples for apples. We have different job descriptions but we bid Primex last year they came in higher they came in much higher than the municipal association and there were many coverages they did not afford us so we won't know till they all come in so well, we are sending it to Primex to okay. answer that question oh, yeah, I have the application have on my desk and it's almost ready to be sent off to them yeah. but we'll probably go off to them um, this week for sure and a few other towns also yeah. so you know my next question is until we get those bids in we can't really do much with this right with yeah, the default budget right. Or, or this budget. Or this one. Hmm. Like, like I said, the numbers have even changed since I gave uh, this budget to you guys. The property liability and the workers' comp, if anything, I would say that this would be the lowest, these new quotes that we got, that it would be, in, they're both higher than what I have in um, the budget that I have sent out to you guys, because I just used 5%, because that's what we had been uh, using until we got the rates every year, so we just well. did the 5%, so... Let's just check off on this what we can look at. Obviously, we can't look at workers' comp and we can't look at the general liability. Um, health, life, unemployment, are those done or that fall in there too? Those are done as far as I'm concerned. We have our rate in okay. for health insurance. Um, I'm sure many of you heard it went up overall 17.3%. Um, I looked at the actual plans that our employees are on um, because that's all we're budgeting for here and the average between those there was five different plans that the majority of the employees are on so that average was 17.85 percent and here we're looking at 10.14 percent yes that last year um, we had a decrease of I think anywhere between like five and ten percent across the plans so, so, so that what I did, I took the actuals through September, just so everyone knows how I calculated it. I took the actuals through September of this year, and I was that out, and then I added 17.85% because of the fact that the 17.85% 
reflects a percentage for the five plans that the active employees are on as opposed to the 17.3 overall for all of our plans because we have retirees um, we have people retirees who are on our um, four plans so like our blue trolls but we also have retirees who are on our medical plans so that's why their percentage the overall percentage of the town's plans is lower than the percentage I use because I use one that is more reflective of what our current employees are using and that's what we're budgeting for mm -hmm. so on page 12 on page 12 yes that number is incorrect then. correct because page 12 is this back section is only what was the original budget that was it matches what was in the requested column just mm -hmm. has the right side of the budget always has done it's saying when we requested I took seven percent because that at that point we didn't have the health insurance rates and right. we always have just kind of I just followed into Mike's footsteps and we just use seven percent until we get the rates right. then we got the actual rates from health trust and then that's when my calculation was generated and I believe it was changed at the town managers level the admin level correct yes so the health insurance yes comments are are germane here that they the dollars for that the what the dollars budgeted are are, are firm Firm. For the health insurance. 2903204? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Again, there's some things that we can't change. Right. Yeah. yeah. We'd like to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's a gamble, too, because you still don't know, like, how many of our single guys are going to get married, how many people are going to have kids. You know what I mean? I'm just basing it on actuals from this right. year. Yeah. And right. you don't, you can't predict who's going to retire, who's going to be hired. Yeah. None of those things. So I can do. So that 2903204 so would be where you took it up to September. And divide by nine, and then no, no. And she took the actual at twelve that. to get this current year's rate, Correct. and yeah. then you added seventeen point whatever. Eighty five percent, yes. Am I correct to understand that under the health insurance, retirees are still covered by the town, even if they go on Medicare? This town is still picking up the cost. The town does not pick up any cost for any retirees that I'm aware of. We do have to have the authority, though, to pay the bill. They pay us, we pay Some the bill. Do. Only, Some only do. a handful of them pay okay. us. The rest of them come out of their pension checks. So it, it, the money she has here covers the ones we have to pay for, and they reimburse us, so they come in and pay every month, or that we, we draw the money out from an account every month. If that's not there, <coughs> they don't have insurance because I can't pay the bill. Mm -hmm. right. Sounds like what you need to do is to look uh, let the employees under affordable health care get their own policies and give them a, a set fee. I can't. Mm -hmm. I know. Tim? Yeah. Well, Obamacare offers them yeah, an individual we'll opportunity, about Obamacare. Right? Well, no, this is insurance there. I mean, it's Obamacare is part of the insurance world, whether you like it or not. Well, they're entitled to this insurance because of the union contracts mm -hmm. in their retirement. Right. Acknowledged. So, yeah, I, was re I was addressing yeah, the prior to Sunny. Okay. If they but don't have the insurance, I find it curious if then they can go to somebody else to get it. If the in insured retired person is actually paying the, f the bill, right? The actual there price. are some that are actually paying the bill through us, right? Now, wh why would that? I mean, what value added are we having in that process? That's all goes back to how you collectively bargained in the past. So no, no, no visible value added other than the collective bargaining. We're just acting negotiation. The thing. person who writes a check, that's all. There's okay. only like five people or six yeah, that do right. that. Right. Yeah. And the majority right. of those people don't have. It puts them in a bigger pool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if they don't have insurance, they're paying the whole bill, right? That's Correct. what I heard. So it's not, a, right. it's not an insurance pool in that case. They're just paying the whole bill. Well, they're a member of our pool. Right. All of our retirees are a member of our pool. Oh, so they're actually paying for the insurance in that Thank pool you. as well. That's correct. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Now, uh, you, now you're offering five uh, health plans, right? <laughs> no, we offer Sunny. way more than five health plans. If you could, sir, please raise your hand to be acknowledged. So it's, it's actually far better than Obamacare, actually. Sort of um, right. Can we continue? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You mentioned, uh, Fred, as, as we've discussed in previous years about the uh, liability and general insurance line item that some carriers don't cover all that uh, you want to have covered. And if my memory is correct, and I think it's at least partially correct, um, that meant uh, there was an admission insurance policy, correct? 
the errors and emissions for legal is not covered by most companies. Right. Uh, the PLT do, does cover that, but they're not a license to write insurance. Does not. We don't know if the Secretary of State will allow that. Um, we would have to go out in the open market to buy that. We also have a coverage on property and liability for 100% replacement of our fire fire equipment and ambulances. The other companies don't offer that. So uh, what would happen is if we had a million dollar ladder truck, which is what they sell for now, and it was 10 years old and it was half depreciated, they would give us $500,000 and we'd have to put 500000 up to buy a new ladder truck. Mm -hmm. Under what circumstances? Mm -hmm. just six, I mean, we have destroyed. destroyed. Destroyed by anything? No. Yeah, the coverage that we have now is any damage whatsoever is completely covered. If the, if the vehicle is destroyed uh, in the town's possession, so if the fire truck is, is on a on a call, on a call, it lays in fire, it's replaced, and, and the building burns on top of the fire truck and destroys the truck, we get a new, we get five hundred thousand dollars, right? No, right yeah. now we get new we get new fire truck, brand new, completely yeah. equipped. So maybe we should have a policy of parking our fire trucks closer to the buildings. <laughs> <laughs> But the other, yeah, so those are the two of the 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 um, fire uh, truck. Uh, and there are there are some others. For instance, emissions. our elected officials are covered by bonds. Our own insurance company fund those bonds, so we'd have to go out in the open market to buy those bonds. We're required to have them. Well, that's a curiosity to me as well. Uh, and that's all right now under liability and general insurance. That's correct. Oh, the PLT funds okay, well, all that. Why would elected officials? Uh, oh, you're talking about bonding for those who are actually handling money. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not liability. Mm -hmm. It's bonded. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I understand. That. That's currently part of our coverage. Right. Quite understandably. But that would be true whether elected or not. Right? Same coverage. Right. Same bond. There's a different type of coverage. There's a there's a specified coverage by statute for elected officials. Uh -huh. And then you go to 31, 105, and 106, which the town has accepted. I think was, we accepted 105, and 106 is required. Uh, those have to be funded, and we have to buy insurance for it. Yeah, those are two separate requirements, but they can both those be Those are for appointed officials, officials though, right? and elected officials, and they, re they cover general liability in certain areas right. that are not covered by the bonds required by statute. Right. And then the one that's a continuing curiosity to me, and the final one, I hope, I'm sure you all do too. We do. Uh, <laughs> is the error, errors and omissions uh, policy, which apparently just covers our, 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 our on staff legal, right? That's correct. And from what I understand, my understanding of it is that errors and omissions are for when you make an error or you omit something in defense of your client, that the, uh, that the, uh, the insurance would then kick in. Correct. Okay. So we are that attorney's client. So actually, we're covering ourselves, aren't we? I mean, literally. We're paying for insurance to cover our own staff in case they make a mistake that causes us harm. I suppose you could look at it one direction that way, but think of the number of cases. He said, I think we had 29 cases last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, he had to do work in each one of those cases, and he could be charged with error and omissions by the other party, and we're covered. That's the, that's the piece of liability. I don't I don't understand if it, it plays out that way. I understood that errors and omission only apply to those who are damaged by your professional act or inact. Well, and that could be the and, other party. The other party wouldn't be damaged by it. They would be benefited by it. Not necessarily. Depends on which way the error or omission went. But the town would remain liable. The town's pay. always liable. Bottom line, to not have an ENO policy. The employee like is not. We're on a slippery slope. Okay. We'll, we'll have further discussion on this thread next year. <laughs> <laughs> After I do further research on the question. Yes. 331, 105, 106. By all means, please expand on that next year. Um, Fred, one last thing I noticed Ma that NHMA dues have gone up. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. Are we getting any added value for that increase? Well, they... Uh, it went up a bit. It, it did. Uh, and you have to understand that... that uh, when the state stepped in and separated all these agencies, the PLT and the health insurance and the NHMA, uh, there were obviously, and, and the state was right in doing that, but there obviously were sums that were being siphoned off from the other two agencies to help fund the NHMA. Those funds are no longer there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're now paying for that entire operation out of our dues. Okay. 
Uh, just a footnote on that. Remember, over $15,000, we are eligible for a free seminar. Um, we've had years when it wasn't utilized. We utilized it this past year. It was productive. Next year, you may choose your own topic. But well, within reason. At the fifteenth, <laughs> yeah, at the fifteen thousand dollars threshold to a municipality, you can have one free seminar. Yep. Thank you. You, you already asked him. Mm. One more. Huh? No. Wrap it up. You want you oh, want out our patients. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I did remind me of the MHA may dues, which went up five point seven percent, and I did want to reiterate that. I think the entire town benefited uh, this past year by having that seminar on TV. Yep. And so I, I do see, I know NHMA does some other things, but that one is clearly visible and useful to everyone in town. And uh, even though it's a 5.7% increase, if we're able to have that kind of seminar, uh, which of course is subject to the board select and approving that kind of activity, uh, it doesn't cost anything additional, and the town gets a great benefit. Yeah. And so uh, I'm inclined to support that line item when we get down to review. If, in fact, I get some indication to the Board of Selectmen that they're inclined to, to do something similar next year as well. Oh, well, thank right, you very much. Right now we have uh, one of the things that, that we have a lot of at the moment is we have webinars put on by the NHM. Right. Um, for instance, we had a webinar yesterday, uh, which council attended and, and the planning board attended, planning board planners attended, uh, dealing with the Supreme Court decision on signs and sign ordinances, which, thank God they're putting it on because we can save a lot of money by I've paying attention. I've utilized webinars, and they're, they're, they're useful. They're, they're very good, and, and we probably have five or six of those a month at minimum. Mm -hmm. So it saves a lot of money for us. Because it saved money in our budget this year for every person that we sure. we send to a seminar is seventy five it's a seventy five dollar charge right. for the training. It went up a little bit too. Yeah, it used to be it went up to like eighty five or ninety. But did it go up? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well we did it free this year and everybody here benefited from that. So I just throw it out there because it's one of the things that gets lost mm -hmm. yeah. and certainly that that particular seminar was open to as many as we had, yeah. we could have had 30 people in this room, and they still would. It still would have been free. Um, so sometimes, in a respect to 91A that deals with everybody, you might want to consider the auditorium and have that. Done. Yeah. Just throwing it out there because it, if we're paying more, we might as well get all the benefits from it that we can. Just to highlight one point, I mean, yeah, my friend brought up the webinars and. Uh, if you go to NHA's website, for the, especially for the people who are new and are aware of it, but on there, they have scheduled webinar, what's called webinars, and you can watch them later on. You don't have to watch them live necessarily, uh, so they're very convenient. But they are not available to the general public. They are available to us as members of the government. Okay, so you should feel free. You have to sign up. They'll send you an email with the authorization yeah. code. But you should feel free to sign up if you see something that is of interest to you. So that's all I have to say. Oh, yeah, I got one more on workman's compensation. Okay. We're, it's about a half a million dollars a year from what I can see and maybe going up. Is there anything we can do about that? I mean, these are people that are at work and get hurt or something like that. These, these are all injuries. Injuries, right? Sustained at work, and a lot of them are firefighters. That's what I thought. Uh, that's a very hazardous position. A number of years ago, we had... Um, Significant increases in workers' compensation because of trash collection. I was going to say, it was DPW back yeah. a number and of years. We've eliminated most yeah. of that. And with the hydraulic lifts and the hydraulic yeah. and, the, and the arms swinging out. Right. The mechanical equipment's removed uh, most of that. So this had to be fire and police, if you yes, will. Yes, it is. It's all claim related. Yeah. yeah. The increase. And, and, and uh, I don't know how we stack up to other towns of our size. I mean, if this is considered excessive or half a million bucks a year I don't know but what what is your take on that well I know some of the towns are complaining about it because they're they're experiencing the same thing um, remember that the costs that are out there uh, and, and the insurance company absorbs there's a five-year payback on that so you're looking at half a million dollars a year minimum for five years yeah on this rate now if we change insurance coverages and go to a different company, that could be significantly more. That would drop, though, had, if we had less claims, right? Well, over a five-year period, yes. Yeah. Because it's a rolling five-year period, so. 
I mean, it's, you know, with industry, we have safety accidents, they're investigated, and there's a continuous drive to we do that. try to prevent them. We have, we have a committee that's composed of management employees and, 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 and union employees. It's required by statute. We have rules and regulations. They meet four times a year. Uh, we actually send teams out into the buildings to identify potential problems for accidents. Yeah, and uh, they're, re they're ordered to be fixed. It's not something that we sit around and wait for something to happen. Yeah, We're mean, actually very proactive, proactive in that area. Yeah, I mean, because... Uh, now, I've heard on television with the selectmen meeting and so on, the fire chief comes in, he's talking about this guy's out, this guy's out, two, three, four guys out, yeah. I believe. And that's what I kept thinking about, they're hurt and the compensation. It's a dangerous job. You know, it is. Happens. It is. It's a very dangerous job. And and one of the, you heard probably the selectmen's meeting the other night, we were talking about buying uh, new yeah, yeah, it, equipment for them to wear. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, the uniforms and, and suits that they have to wear at the fires, yeah. and, and that's that's dangerous to themselves because of the carcinogens they carry around with those suits. Of course. They have to be cleaned and, and washed on a regular basis. Right. I heard them both. Yeah. Is it preponderance fire or or is it balance between police and fire? I think the preponderance right now is fire, but yeah. it swings back and yeah, forth. Yeah, it goes every way. Public works is down, though, to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah I remember when, in like, 09, and I, I think in 08, 09, 010, public works had a lot of compensation because they were lifting barrels and hurting their backs and things of that nature, but we did solve it with the articulating yeah. arms and the hydraulic lifts on the back of the rear dumpsters, the rear trucks, the rear garbage trucks. Trash Good job, Jerry. Okay, I'm going to move this now um, to municipal insurance, I'm sorry, government buildings. Our last section, page 11 and OBS 6. Mm -hmm. Page 11. And I guess the thing, uh, I think the largest increase there is 12% for heating <coughs> fuel. And um, we just annualized all of those costs out and came up with our best guess for any of the increases that are there, you know, in, in <coughs> not only annualizing what we've spent in 15 and then coming up with a number for um, 16. Well, I annualized 15 and came up with about $8,500. They're asking for 13.5. I thought maybe you guys got notified that we had a oh, for increased it. fuel costs. Fuel costs are going up. No secret involved in that one. Uh, same with electric. Oh, you got gas, right? Yes, we do. So our, our increase is much smaller than it would be if we had the original heating elements in this building, which are electric. We don't use those anymore. Electric usually is the most expensive energy. Uh, yeah, but you got to remember, this bank was built. This building was built as a bank, and and it was somebody else's money that they were used to pay for it. So. <laughs> well, the thing is, the thing is as well is that years ago. They thought that when they built the nuclear plant that electricity would be very cheap. Mm -hmm. So that was the thinking. That's why people put electric cable yeah, all they, around this area at they, the time. It was pre-nuclear. Uh, they used to think if you were a large enough pair of wings, you could fly. <coughs> and the thing is, the, the plant ended up coming in a lot more money. It cost you know a lot more at the time. But that was the thinking back in the 70s. The biggest problem we have in this building is maintenance. We're constantly maintaining this building, mm -hmm. constantly. And go to Lord Fred, I don't mean to interrupt, but this room, um, is it checked for mold? Yes, the is building has been completely reviewed for that. It has. Okay. There was one spot of mold in the back corridor at the basement, which was removed. It was black mold. Uh, we, we, we periodically had the building checked. We also had the building ducts and so forth all cleaned. Clean. Is this, how about this carpet? Is that cleaned on a regular basis? Brand new, and it's cleaned at least twice a year. Okay, thank you. Um, just one minute, Brian. Mm -hmm. On the heating fuel, we're using mm -hmm. um, number two grade oil. Oh, yeah. No, it's all gas. It's all gas. Natural gas, yeah. I'm looking at heating fuel, thinking. Are you on a budget? Do they give you a budget on that? And then they... No, they just successfully give us a bill. They don't. Like, I get a... Um, I'm on a budget plan, right? Commercial they, commercial buildings aren't subject to that. They, they increment it every year. 
like because I use more gas than they had. Uh, same, same thing. And, and every year it just ratchets it up a little bit more. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. Brian? Probably would I. Um, underwater. 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 Yeah. Going up ten percent. It's going to go up another. Yeah. It's going to go up another twenty. <laughs> Aquarium. Now, originally, I was told four point five immediately. If you've been listening to what's been going on for the last three years, right? Uh, they have the wicker charges, and then they have the rate increases. Right. Okay. Two the wicker charges okay. were put on postponement for three years. Uh, because they were getting money back from the federal government because of a change in IRS regulations which allowed them to uh, refile their income tax returns and their, their depreciations and so forth and get, get a large payment back over a three-year period. During that period of time, the wicked charges averaged 2%. You weren't billed them. This year, you're going to get 2, 4, 6, plus 2% all at once. Plus, they're going to probably file for a rate increase, which they said will be under 10 percent, but it will be very close to 10 percent. 9.99, so yeah. You're going to get almost a 20 percent rate increase by the time this is all over. Some of that background information would have been beneficial had it been in the book. Yeah. Actually, Both water and heating fuels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we did extensive talking on that. Um, the water rates are very high when it comes to a constant every single year having a wicker charge. Now, we have, we have objected to the worker charge and we testified before the Public Utilities Commission because the way the system is set up is that <coughs> if they spend a million dollars in improvements, that a million dollars is added to the wicker charge and they receive a certain percentage based upon the rate and the repayment of that. If that's repaid in 20 years, the wicker charge goes on forever. It yeah, never comes on. Talking about capital yeah. improvements. So, uh, you know, that just keeps on going and going and going and going and going. That that percentage stays on there forever, and they just keep on pancaking on top. We brought that issue up, and the Public Utilities Commission said, yeah, so what? Aquarium was in, what, the last week or two? Yeah. They were. I saw yeah, they announced yeah. the new wicked charges. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, uh, That's where I was coming from, because I was... Right, and on that, that and it says that the, we used uh, the 731.15 annualized, and we added 10%. Right. So we did add the 10% there. To what we had. Yeah, that's what I, that was my question. I mean, I, but I mean, if, it, if this was due to wicker charges or things of that nature, I mean, you know, some of the wicker is the only thing that's going up at the moment. But they have told us, and they told us before they went on the moratorium on the wicker, the post temporary postponement, that they would be filing a rate increase. But the wicker is that because of capital improvement that they make? It's capital so, improvement. Right, right. So they got to they have to they have to get their investment back over time. Is what they. Well, yeah, but their investment's coming back over forever. Right. Because they're always... So if you make the million dollars back in 10 years, yeah. in the next 10 years, you're going to make a million dollars on nothing. Yeah. They That's pay for the nothing. difference. We pay for everything. Okay. And That's all. The thing that bothers me most about, that I hear complaints about, are people that have sprinkler systems. They don't want to pay for the installation of the sprinkler system. And they don't mind... It's the, the use of the water. it's the readiness to surcharge. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. They get charged every month for water, you know, that must be in the system there. So do we. And, and uh, that bothers them a lot. It's, it's like our hydrants. We have to pay, what, four hundred to 500000 a year for hydrants? That's correct. And, and because of water is there and available for us, it's like an asset that's in storage, if, if you will. And that's probably how they look at it. I don't know how they write at these. Well, I'm not, I, I don't look at it that way. I used, to, I used to work for municipal water companies. So, yeah. But I mean, know, it's it, water that's standing into, our, into the pipes ready to feed to us, if you will. So they uh, can't really have that open to service. But they have to keep it pressurized. Yeah. Well, the whole system has to be pressurized. Right. right. Okay. What you're looking at over there in that clock, that was the town trade off between buying the. Uh, the railway, the street railway company, and buying the water company. They bought the street railway company, and four years later, it went bankrupt. That's, that's we an eighty thousand dollar flock. <laughs> that's what we got to do. <laughs> so I'd like to have a discussion someday with Aquarium myself in terms of uh, really push on it and see why they why they they get to these figures of four to five hundred thousand dollars for the hydrants and, and and what they charge for homes. That oh, that's sprinkles. that's. Gentlemen, can we move on? You need to understand that that's something done by the Public Utilities Commission, and I've been through a number of rate increases. Um, 
and their position is and their regulations state that when the rate increase gets to a certain level I'll give you an example Pittsfield they, they wanted a 75 percent rate increase over the general public and a 275 percent rate rate increase over the town all right the Public Utilities Commission said you can have a 20 percent rate increase for the people all the rest of it goes on hydrants and that's the philosophy of the state of New Hampshire it all goes on hydrants <coughs> well, Michael yes I had a question about the fuel oil again we have an energy committee that gets some um, special rates just for public works not the town buildings I, I, what oil you said no no we're using gas we're using gas but that, that they Energy Committee works with gas. I know. The Energy Committee, with, with uh, our own, with, with Russia? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's working on sun and, and solar right now. Yeah. Well, that's for the that project there, but they've been negotiating for gas in the past. I, that that oh, that's does true. Not, that's true. Oh, it does not include the town buildings? Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. Electric is. Yes. These costs are still rising. Gas. Uh, gas. Just like the electric costs that they negotiated, they're still rising. So they weren't able to get us a good deal then. Huh? Well, they got us a great deal. And if they hadn't gotten us that deal, you'd be adding another 10 or 15 percent to this. Okay. I just wanted to say for it's, that package. Yeah. And, and this and building is the same as public works. So. Things have changed because gas supply is now limited. They, they, we, we need another line coming into the state in order to bring the gas supply to its full potential. Okay. And when that happens, rates will start going in the opposite direction. Electric rates the same way. Right now we're paying over 15 cents a kilowatt hour plus demand charges for this building. I mean, when we walk into this building, if you walked in here today and you turn no electricity on for the next 11 months, you get the same bill. Because of the 11% ratchet that's in the electric rate. So I mean, you're, you're, every time you increase your electric use and your demand, that ratchet goes up some more. Now, I was just curious about fuel, and it, I mean, the, the gas for the heating well, heating fuel, as you call it, and uh, We got a good rate on that. Very good, that's all I can think of. Okay. I think we've killed that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have one more question for Fred, though. Seriously. All right. All right. All right. It's gasoline, Fred. Gasoline. I am totally uncomfortable still with gasoline. But, but that's not problem. part of this. What do you want to talk about gasoline? Well, it's a spread through all, all the budgets, and there's, there's adjustment going on right now. With I use gasoline in government buildings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean for heating fuels. No, no, this is the Which topic is, is government buildings, Jerry. Right, it was. That was the topic. Well, you don't want to get into gasoline? They do, but it's appropriate. It's not on, not on this subject. Yeah. Not on this one, but you know what? I'll, I'll give yeah. gasoline to every, so everybody's prepared next week um, on the 12th. All right, we'll put gasoline on all by yeah, itself. Multiple chance with fire and DPW and police to get yeah. gasoline all over the place. No, right? no, I, 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 you know, I really, I, I am not comfortable to take care of that next week. All right, we were going to do this yes. tonight. We'll I wanted to keep these uh, meetings a little bit shorter. I want to thank you, Fred, for being with us. Our pleasure Thanks to be here. To be with us. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to put the minutes on. I'm sorry. Mr. The default budget, you referred to that. Is there a date when, when that Well, we discussed that we can't put the, we can't have the default budget until the insurance lines are secured. And that's why I was asking it may be as far out as the middle of December before those lines are secured. We're pushing the insurance companies to get that early. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, Christy will be able to plug those numbers in and give us the default budget. Okay, that will be the same time frame where we're doing our total review of the budget. So it will be prior to the review. I mean, hopefully before that, because we're hoping by the middle of December to have all of the rates back for um, the property liability and the uh, workers' compensation. So as soon as we have those, we can plug those in. And we can okay, finish the default budget, give it to the select and yeah. vote, and then it can be yeah. worked. Yeah. 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 We're we'll working through them. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Good night. And for everybody else, springboards. <coughs> Stephen has a question on next Thank week's schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Next Thursday on the 12th, we have assessing trustees of the trust fund revenues, long term debt, welfare, and now gas. And it's my understanding. Well, they're out. That's what I was going to say. Do we need to have welfare come here? Because as we discussed before, whatever she has to spend, she has to spend by law. That's it. Uh, look, she's 51K. 
rebound significantly this year. I, I think. I'm just saying. Do we need to have her come in? I'm interested in this. If it's okay with everybody, I think welfare is an anomaly here right. because whatever it has to be, it has to be, regardless of what she even gave us for a budget. Yeah. When you get to it, whatever the need is, it is. So it's, if it's okay with everybody, we don't have to waste our time. I looked at it before I came, and, and really, this is going to go with me. All right. So we're not going to have a welfare presentation. We'll have a welfare presentation. Yes. Are there any other items on that agenda that we should consider not having on the No, I looked at no. it. All have oh, okay. No, you. as a matter of fact, everything it. else should be on there. Be Thank Cross you. out, wait, don't run out the door yet. Cross out welfare. Remember, conservation is there next week, too. But I would appreciate, because we have, I think next week is probably the longest schedule. Tonight could have been a little shorter. Um, you conservation is due next I'm week. Gonna ask, I'm going to ask you to do this. Go over your budget books. Come with your questions written down so we can go around once. All right? And not a lot of back and forth on that. And um, if it doesn't have to do with the budget, don't expand and go into something else. That's all I'm going to ask you. Where did you move? If I ask Scott. Just um, revenues. That's yes. that's next week. That's next I sent you an extensive uh, yes. list on that. I mean, I, I think that is huge. I mean, the, the, there's. I think the revenues are significantly understated in, in the budget. And have we shared that with, with uh, Christy? Because I. <coughs> and, um, the revenue, right? the, the department has to well, do that. If I may, the, the revenues every year, are, these are estimated revenues, they have no impact <coughs> on the tax rate at all. And they are always underestimated, consciously. So they don't impact, no. the tax rate is expenses only. These, right. this, this set of estimated revenues doesn't go to DRA for calculation of the tax rate. What does go to DRA for calculation of the tax rate is the adjusted estimated revenues that are done in October. Uh, by October 1, I believe the date is. September 1st. September 1st. Okay, September 1st. And it's not actual because it estimates the balance of the well, year, but well, it's pretty close to actual at that point. But it's that number on September 1 that affects the tax rate. What you're seeing in the budget book is just an estimate that has no effect whatsoever on the tax rate. So why are we even looking at it? Because the law requires us to have it in the budget book. You, s you can still forecast. You can still play with it. No, that's what it is. I just, I just, it, it, so it doesn't seem to satisfy the legal requirement that's been yeah. there since uh, the 17th. But I think there's a group, we'll, so we'll spend zero time on revenues. I agree. No, we well, well, you'll have is, what you'll have is a presentation on revenues, and usually it gives you an explanation of what there is available to you that will be clearer probably after it's presented to you. It's we have multiple funds in multiple places and sometimes we forget ourselves that we can access those rather than build accounts into it, build money into the budget. That's an excellent point is that yeah periodically we need to check that and we sometimes haven't always. It's more of a discussion about the right. nature and the source of the revenues rather than the yeah. actual amount. Right. right. On that I'll move to adjourn. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Have we haven't heard from Nick at all tonight. Oh, so. trust me, that's fine. I'm more than happy with that. <laughs> and then Mike. <laughs> um, review of the minutes. Are we pushing that till the next meeting? We're pushing that till the next yeah. meeting. Uh, that, and I, I was just making sure because it was on the agenda. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, I, asked you I said that a little while ago. Okay. Okay. I asked to where? I'm sorry? December. Where'd you December, move? December. We moved December, that to December, December 10th. Okay, thank you. That's my only question. December 20th. Motion is told. December 20th. Anybody second it? You can't December make a motion yeah. to, to adjourn while people are still talking. Topic, right? I'm sorry. December 10th is MIS. MIS. I wish okay. I was MIS. The EPW is there, too, right? <laughs> hey, no. Yeah. Yeah, the only other item on that thing. I still haven't gotten any uh, word from you. Mike and I, uh, that's because I haven't gotten any word. We should have. All right, right so here. that's we why we should have and, and right some away. questions that have not been have not been answered, and that's why MIS was moved to twelve ten. So we haven't got ours answered. With that said, I'll entertain that motion to there adjourn. Is. I second. Second it. All in favor. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, Next Thursday night, live in action. Hello.